Okay, so I need a definitive answer on something. There's no wiggle room. You guys say right now, are we ever going to see you do the dunk contest? <laughs> are you enjoying LA? Yeah, it's smooth. Man. I'm ready to get back home though. Yeah, it's funny seeing you in LA because you're not like a big city scene nah. mixy person. I like being in the cut at the crib. <laughs> Yeah. In my own bed. <laughs> <laughs> so then how do you handle, like here, everyone's like, where are we at tonight? Where are the bottles? What are we doing? Like, how do you kind of handle that when you know it's not really your comfort zone? Uh, Stay at the crib, my peoples. Yeah. Uh, lately, we've just been playing Madden against each other. So mm -hmm. that really just kept us out of the mix. Yeah. From being outside. When you play, what team do you play with? Uh, The Cardinals. Re why? D-Hop. Okay. Are y'all <laughs> friends? Yeah, that's my guy, okay. South Carolina. Of course. Okay, are you good at Madden? I'm going to let my fam ask, answer that question. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know if that means yes or no. I'm like 15 and 1 right now. Uh, so if anybody wants smoke in Madden, just hit me up. <laughs> Do you play anyone in the league? Nah. I just started playing when we got here. Really? And it, I kind of... I rock with it a little bit now. Yeah, I'm like, so you're a week <laughs> in and you're 15 and 1. Yeah, I'm nice like that. Because I don't think you are a gamer or were a gamer, right? Nah, I mean, I play, but not as much. I play Call of Duty. Yeah. But, like, I don't play the game, like, every day. Yeah. Probably two, three times a week, if that. Yeah, and it's uh, just caught on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to run around with baby girl, man. So. Yeah, so you don't really have time. Dude. <laughs> nah. I'm sure you miss her being here. Yeah, that's why I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, but I love, like, you FaceTime her all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure she'll she FaceTime me. I was going to say, I... she probably knows how to work it. <laughs> yeah, she know how to hang up, uh, everything. <laughs> Put me on pause and say she want to watch TikTok. <laughs> oh, she's a TikToker. Yeah. What are, she what just like to dance. So if she had any music, she gonna dance. <laughs> That's really Sometimes she'll dance without music. She just, I guess, play the song in my head. Just, yeah. yeah. Well, you dance without music sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so she, she definitely gets that from you, <laughs> yeah. I would say. Just be vibing, you know? Good <laughs> <Yeah>. energy. <laughs> well, so I feel like everybody knows you are my favorite. You're my favorite for a multitude of reasons. One, because I interviewed you like right before you got drafted. And you still act the exact same yeah. uh two because i love your dad <laughs> that's actually my favorite person on earth you you're like number two um but a huge reason why is you are like one of the most supportive people i think not even just in the league but just in general i think especially with women especially with black women i think when people have just kind of gone through hard times you always very publicly support you've done it with me you've done it with maria taylor you've done it with shikari you've done it with naomi osaka wnba players where does that come from for you because i don't think a lot of the guys are like that or a lot of guys in general i can say it's just how i was raised you know to you know just treat everybody you know how i want to be treated um i'm a very you know caring person you know full of love so um i just you know spread love uh mm -hmm. positive energy um it's pretty much me <laughs> yeah but you do realize like how much that probably means to the people that you are doing it for yeah uh 100 percent um and now you know i have a you know a, i feel like a, a bigger voice um so i feel like you know it Eventually, you know, they will see it and, you know, more people will, you know, start doing the same. So, mm -hmm. What do you think about the way it feels like everyone was like, so Team Shakari, rooting for Shakari, and then she did the race and it was like everybody just kind of turned on her. I mean, what was that like for you to see online? I feel like that's life. That's how it is. Like when you up, you know, everybody want to, you know, clap, be your friend, you know. But as soon as, you know, some little thing like her just losing a race, they all just flipped on her. And, yeah. That's just how it is. I feel like if she raced again the next day and would have won, they would have been back on, you know, oh, uh, she's the greatest. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just life. Um, I'm, you know, I, I like how she, you know, dealt with it, but um, she's got to, you know, come back and redeem herself. The thing that was so puzzling to me about that whole thing is everyone's like, she's too cocky. I'm like, well, no, she just thought she was going to win. Yeah. I feel like she's not cocky. I just feel like she just got a lot of confidence in herself. I mm -hmm. feel like it's the same with me. Like, 
I'm not cocky at all, very humble, but I'm confident too. So yeah. if I feel like, you know, I'm the best, you know, I'm, I'm gonna say that. So yeah. I feel like that's just what she was doing. One thing I always remember um, when Michael Jordan, you know, did the last dance, everybody's watching it over the pandemic. He was talking about a player, I can't remember who, but he was like, I respect this player because he was still talking trash while he was losing. Yeah. Like he stayed consistent. He stayed the same with it. And I actually think it's like a sign of strength and a sign of like really knowing who you are that even at the end of the race, she was like, I'm going to come back. Yeah. It's like people want to see somebody be defeated when they are defeated. Yeah. And I don't really know what like people get from that, especially online. I don't either, honestly. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm with that, you know, staying consistent no matter you, if you're winning or losing. Um, so back to saying, like, I like how she dealt with it. Like, right after she was like, you know, I'll be back. Like, just got to put in more work. Yeah. It's just simple as that. Totally. Now, you are someone who loves to engage on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you will talk to the fans. I think at one point in a post-game interview, you were like, that was for you who said it. We won't go win this. Yeah. Like, so tell tell me that story and what happened with that tweet. Um, it's pretty much just, you know, it'd be a lot of talking. I'd be seeing. Um, it'd really be my mom. She'd be trying to, you know, get me off of Twitter all the time. <laughs> like, don't even don't even go on Twitter. Don't look at your phone like that. And, you know, I was just looking and I just, you know, I'd be seeing people talking all the time before games, after games. And I normally don't say too much, you know, before. Uh, sometimes I want to, but, you know, I'll be like, nah, we got to lock in on the game. Like, you know, just let the win, you know, do the talking or whatever. So then after the fact, if we win now, I can say whatever I want. Yeah. So just like, you know, they, they go in there and talk, I'm going I'm to talk back. So if anybody at me, you better be prepared for a <laughs> reply. Better be prepared <laughs> for that post-game interview. I'm calling out your at name. Yep. <laughs> so get ready for that. And I'm put all my fans, I'm going to make sure they get into all your mentions, replies, <laughs> everything. DMs, they yeah. make sure they all DM you. All of it, all <laughs> of it. I know, okay, so for me, I remember when I like first started in my career, to be completely honest, I like really cared about social media. Like yeah. I really cared about what someone was tweeting about me or commenting, you reach a point where like you stop caring, right? But I think that when there's so many people always saying things about you, it's hard to completely block it off. Are there yeah. times that it does somewhat get to you or are you completely used to it at this point? I feel like sometimes, you know, like it, it gets under my skin. So that's, you know, when I say something. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the time, you know, I just, be cooler. Like, it's hard to not see everything. Like, even on my Twitter, if I scroll for a minute, it'll have, like, John Morant right there, and then it just show all the tweets that got my name in it. So, like, uh, okay, I don't, I don't know how to get away from that. So, like, yeah. I'm eventually, you know, see the tweet or whatever. But, like, you know, I, I really don't care. I feel like, you know, now social media is just brainwashing people. Like, mm -hmm. People living lives, you know, they're not living in real life. Yeah. They just go on there just to, you know, say something negative just to, you know, yeah. get attention. So, And, like, why not be nice? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, everyone should just be nice to everyone all the time. Like, what do you get out of being mean to somebody online? Like, I just, I don't understand, like, what would be the point of making a comment that is at least neutral, right? Like, yeah. it's okay to say, okay, I don't think you had a great game. That's fine. Yeah. But, like, I just think sometimes people tend to take it to another level that it just like doesn't yeah. really, really have to go. Like you see some players get, you know, death threats and all this stuff. Like, nah, mm -hmm. that's too far. No, totally. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's that's actually life. Like yeah. there's no place in the world where like things don't have real consequences except for online. Yeah. Um, and so I just think at some point there is gonna be this awakening for people that decide that's what they what they want to do online. They behind a phone so they feel like they can say whatever. Yeah. I, I doubt most of them say it in person. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, like 100%. <laughs> Nobody would say it in person. They won't. Yeah. I mean, so speaking of, you know, just absolutely unacceptable things, I know obviously in Utah, your family was unfortunately subject to like a terrible racist incident there. I know that your dad has spoke on it, but I just want to know for you, what was that like? And what was the timeline from when you like realized what happened? Because obviously you were playing a game, a great game, by the yeah. way, that um, kind of ended up being marred by, by this happening. Um. I feel like, you know, it was tougher for me. Um, you know, like I every game, you know, I know my my people sitting at, no matter if we home or away. Like I asked, you know, 
where they sitting at before the game so, you know, I can look. Sometimes my mom will, you know, wave and just be like, you know, let's go. My pops are normally courtside, but, you know, we was away. I put them all in, you know, the same section for that reason, you know, hearing about, you know, how Utah fans were. And, I mean, I was – I think it was second half, you know, I was uh, – scoring like I think I scored like back to back and there was a timeout and like I just went to look up and I just see like my whole family standing up and then I knew at that point it was you know something so like I'm like trying to look back but I'm like bro I gotta lock into the game but my loyalty like I felt like if anything had to happen I would have probably end up in the bleachers so Mm -hmm. I was just trying to you know just tell like our security like just tell them just you know stop and chill but at that time, I didn't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was, I felt like, you know, my peoples was like, like, Jai, it's easy for you to say to calm down, but you don't know what's going going on or whatever. And then they finally told me after. And it was, I was like, well, I wish I told y'all to just, you know, go ahead and handle your business. <laughs> 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 it's funny because that's what everyone says. They're like, listen, it read is a point where disrespect is disrespect. Yeah. Yeah. And like, me, like my whole family, like, you know, they're laughing joke. Like, we all good people. Like, even if Yellow. we met you for five minutes, like, you know, we're going to treat you like, you know, we knew you for a while, laughing and joking. And if you see any of my family, you know, get to that point, obviously they fed up. So, yeah, it feels like lucky. Luckily, there has been, you know, a crackdown on what is going to be acceptable for NBA fans. But why do you think fans even feel like they could have acted that way to begin with? I honestly don't know. I feel like, you know, my fam, like, you know, laughing and joking, obviously, but they just as confidence, uh, confident in me as I am. So I'm pretty sure they was like, oh, here he go, like he waking up, and they probably, you know, just start getting mad because we was coming back. No, nah, he was big waking up. I think that was 47 <laughs> points in that game. <laughs> so, I, I mean, honestly, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, they feel like they can, you know, get away with a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, if it's, a, you know, an incident where, it's a fan and a player normally, the player, you know, the one that get punished, get all the attention. So I felt like, you know, they just felt like they would have, you know, got away with it. Utah definitely, uh, when we came back, you know, showed us, totally. you know, a, a lot of love. So uh, we appreciate that. Yeah, there was a really beautiful moment between your dad and Donovan. Yeah. Um, and I know Donovan very publicly on Twitter was like, this is wrong, this is unacceptable, like, we're all humans. We're just trying to play this game. So it's really nice to see your dad say, listen, you're great. I'm happy you did that. I'm rooting for y'all. Yeah. What was kind of the inception of that moment? And did you get to talk to Donovan and your family get to talk to him? When yeah, I, I talked to uh, a couple of players on their team. Um, even when they came to us for game three, me like on my pregame uh, shooting, um, a lot of players, you know, came up to me and apologized, you know, for what That's happened. Great. So yeah. I like I appreciated that. And um my parents obviously wasn't at the, you know, pregame stuff. So that was really like the first time, you know, they, you know, came in contact, you know, with a player. And mm-hmm. uh, Donovan, you know, sent me a, a personal message to, you know, me and my family and then was able to, you know, talk to my dad. And like I said, like we show everybody love, you know, we treat everybody the same. And that's just, you know, the type of people we are. You know, my dad saying, you know, uh, even though like we lost, he hoped they, you know, go all the way and, you know, win it just mm-hmm. for, you know, what they've been doing. So Yeah. No, I love that video. Yeah. Uh, it's so good. It's so good. Okay, so I need a definitive answer on something. There's no wiggle room. You guys say right now, are we ever going to see you do the dunk contest? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Really? I don't think so. Now, okay, so we've had conversations about the dunk contest, and I know your biggest thing is about the judging of the dunk contest. <laughs> so what would it take for you to be like, okay, you know what? I, I will do this. A million dollars. <laughs> Best dunk gets a mill. <laughs> they give me a mill, to, you know, and I, I get a dunk contest. <laughs> so until then... I'll be watching and just, you know, sending my tweets out for the, you know, judging and stuff. But I feel like now, you know, you just see so many, like, crazy dunks in game that when the dunk contest come, you you just, you know, you don't appreciate the dunk as much. And not too many people can do the dunks, you know, guys are doing in that dunk contest. So mm-hmm. I feel like if you look at it that way, it'll be a lot of more 
you know, 50s. Yeah. So. At what point did you change your mind, though? Because there was a time you were like, Dunk Contest is great. I love to do it one day. Then I just think you were kind of watching. You're like, all right, maybe not. Like, when did that shift happen? The judge, like the past, you yeah. know, two years. I was like, nah. How would you it. judge it? If you got to figure, if you decided how they were judged, who judged it, all that stuff, tell me what your format would be for that. I probably would still do, you know, like the, you know, former players, uh, the judge, but I just feel like, you know, you just got to look at it as how many people can actually do this dunk or like how difficult mm. was it to, you know, do this dunk. Because even though like you have somebody, you know, made the dunk look easy, it's not like... <laughs> It's times where, like, I'd be in the gym, you know, trying some of the dunks and be like, bro, like, it took me 10 times just to, <laughs> like, and they go make it on their first time. So I feel like they look at it as, nah, that was too easy for him, but not looking at the actual dunk. So they'll be like, all right, this is an eight when it should be a 10, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, they actually just made it look easy. Yeah. And that's like, why they should get the 10. That's exactly yeah. why, especially if you're doing uh, between the legs backwards, like, same foot, same hand between, like, you don't see people doing that all the time, so. Mm -hmm. If you did the dunk contest in this fictional world, um, tell me three <laughs> players that you think would give you, like, the best run for your money. Uh, like, the best competition for you in that dunk contest. Zach Levine, uh, Aaron Gordon. And I'm kind of in a, a toss-up between uh, Derrick Jones Jr. and uh, mm. Zion. Okay. Yeah. That would be a fun one. Yeah. Hey, maybe one day, maybe one day they fix the judging and they get the competition. We can make this work, NBA. We can do it. Um, you've obviously had a lot of great in-game dunks. Who do you want to dunk on that you have not dunked on yet? LeBron. Yeah, for sure. I probably uh get that poster and like just put it as soon as you walk in my house. Like, <laughs> Probably have it all over the wall. <laughs> like, <laughs> you open the door. Like, just because, like, it's it's LeBron. Like, yeah. Even when I remember watching uh, when Tatum actually dunked on him. Like, I don't know what I would have done in that moment because, like, I can do a regular dunk and I'd be screaming for about three, four seconds and be behind the play. So, like, if I actually, like, you know, like, dunk on LeBron, like, I probably would get a tech. <laughs> <laughs> you just won't be able to handle it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> It's LeBron, like not even on like, you know, big fan. Like I'm a fan of his game and it's, you know, it's Bron, but like who wouldn't want to dunk on LeBron? Yeah. Like that's saying like back in the day, like who wouldn't want to dunk on Jordan? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to happen one day. That's something you can tell your kids, but I'd be like, Car, you know, I dunked on LeBron or Jordan, right? Like <laughs> she probably don't know who he is right now, but. So you got to pull up the tape. Uh, yeah. You, that's the photo that's behind <laughs> us on the wall. <laughs> um, tell me about kind of like, the anatomy of a dunk, right? Like, for example, how did you know you could jump over Kevin Love? Like, at what point are you like, All right, I can make this work? I think it was like a, I think, if I remember the play right, I think Dylan was dribbling and, like, the ball kicked off his foot. So, like, when I picked it up, a lot of the Cavs player was, like, chasing after the ball, but, I, like, I picked it up, and then all I seen was the goal, really, honestly. Mm -hmm. And then I went to, you know, just like, all right, well, it's time to dunk. And then Kevin Love was right there. So I'm like, well, it's too late to try to do something now. Like, I can't <laughs> just jump and then come down. Like, nah, never mind. I ain't trying to dunk. So I just, I tried it. Yeah. I ended up clearing them, but I, I tried to dunk the ball too hard and hit the back rim. But even your missed dunks are <laughs> like works of art. Like, they still look pretty I good. I'm, I think I'm more known for missing dunks than making them right now. <laughs> My comments be like, make a dunk. Or people would be like, land on two legs. Like, bro, do you know how hard it is to try to do that every time? Like, Yeah. I be want to comment and be like, you know, as other players landing the same way I'm landing, right? Like, I can try to control it, but it don't work every time, bro. Yeah. Why do you think your dunks look so cool, though? Like, I saw those photos that you would retweeted where it's two different games, but it's like the exact same. <laughs> I'm like, how does how does that happen? Probably a, a turnover. I'd be thirsty on fast breaks. Like I, <laughs> I don't know. I turn into the fastest player ever. Just run down the court looking for the dunk. Like yeah. Uh, even on that picture, I think it was versus the Mavs. Uh, I have to pull the video up. But 
when Kyle passed it and I dunked it, he was like, they ain't 12, you thirsty when we was running back. And I was <laughs> laughing at him. But, like, I just take off running. And I just try to, you know, kind of play like cat and mouse. Like, if I know I have people, you know, ahead of me, I, like, run slow so the defense will try to, you know, go to them. And then I just come shooting straight down the middle. And I think both of those dunks was, like, the same play. Okay. But just different games. Yeah. Are you, for the person that's like getting dunked in, dunked on, are you a believer in, okay, make the business decision and get out the way or like try to stop the dunk? Nah, I'm going to get out the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to be in the picture. <laughs> right, well, I'm 6'3", 175, <laughs> soaking wet. Like, what I look like trying to jump with somebody like that, I'm going to just swipe and just move out the way like, you got it. Hopefully I just, <laughs> you know, tip the ball before they go up. But I done got dunked on a couple times before. Yeah. That's why I, I don't, It I, comes for everybody, though. I want to dunk yeah. on people, and I I know, like, once I dunk on somebody, like, that feeling of trying to get the ball out fast, and, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be one of them, so I'm going to just swipe. Sometimes I might try, you know, if I if I jump before you, I'm, if I can jump before you, I'm going to try to block it. But yeah. If you already on your gather step, you, you got it. Yeah, like, best of luck, yeah. Yeah, you got <laughs> Continue it. Continue on. I might just push you up, like, go ahead. Bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um... I remember uh, in the press conference in the bubble after your rookie season, I asked what you will remember most about that year. And your answer was not making the playoffs. What will you remember the most about this past season? S similar answer. You know, making the playoffs, but, you know, not getting farther. Um, it's just, you know, just I feel like, you know, we we showed, you know, we, we're one of the, you know, top teams in this league. We can play with the top teams in this league. I feel like, you know, just our experience and, you know, just gelling together um, kind of played a factor in it. But obviously, you know, we still, you know, fought throughout the uh, series. But um, I really just love, like, both both years, even though, like, we lost, we all still had the same mindset of, you know, well, we got to work. So after we, you know, didn't make it the first year, uh, we was like, we got to lock in this off season and make it next year. And mm -hmm. we did. So now it's the next step, which is, you know, getting farther and, you know, trying to actually, you know, win a championship. So mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, this year, uh, guys have been together a lot in the gym uh, together, which is, I feel like, you know, it's good for us with our chemistry. And we just got to, you know, continue to come together as one. Mm -hmm. And one thing I think every NBA fan realized about the Grizzlies is y'all do not give up. Yeah. <laughs> like there is so much fight and y'all seem like y'all are never dead. It's like yeah. you cannot even take your foot off the gas a little bit because y'all will come back. I mean, yeah. where does that come from for you guys? I just feel like we have the right pieces around us. I feel like, you know, we are all kind of the same, you know, with that uh, underdog mindset, you know, never satisfied. Like it's times like we can win a game and, you know, we'll still be, you know, frustrated, you know, with mm -hmm. how we play because we know, all right, this game wasn't even supposed to be that close. Like, yeah. we just never satisfied. We always want to get better. And that's just our mentality to go out there and, you know, just play hard. Like, no matter the outcome, play as hard as we can and, you know, just continue to fight, and, you know, until that last buzzer sounds. So each and every game, that's just how we attack it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think during the playoffs there were times people were, like, counting you guys out. Yeah. You were always like, no, we're going to come back. We're going to figure yeah. it out. We're going to... Always put up a fight, always give you a good performance, and you guys definitely did that. Um, speaking of being counted out, you talked about it a bit, the Olympics. <laughs> How you feel about the Olympics uh, right now? Um, you know, I'm happy those guys was able to win. That's big time. I actually watched that game. Uh, yeah. That was the, really the only game I, I watched. You know, I sent out tweets, like, asking what was happening. People thought, you know, I was trying to be funny, but I really wasn't watching. Like, I was trying to figure out. I just seen... USA this, USA that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, so what's going on? Like, then it's like, all right, you know, they they lost this game. They lost this game. And that's really was the main topic when they was losing. Mm -hmm. It was games they was winning, and you just be like, all right, they won this game, and nobody said nothing else. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that's just how it is now. But, you know, a lot of people was trying to, you know, make it out like I was trying to, you know, diss the USA team and stuff. But. It wasn't that. Like Good. me, I'm going to speak my mind. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel. So if I wanted to say something about them, I would have put the ad on there. Like, yeah. 
at USA, you this. Like, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> at USA. Yeah, like, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. even sugarcoat it or try to, you know, you know, talk behind their back or nothing like that. Yeah. I was just really trying to figure out, you know, what was going on. Like, yeah, for sure. And I know you were like really happy when when they won yeah. and it was definitely a good game. Is playing in the Olympics a goal of yours? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It definitely is. Were you like upset or hurt that it wasn't this time around? Uh no, nah, not really. I wouldn't I mean, I'm grateful and thankful for everything. I know like it's all God's time. So mm -hmm. um, whenever my time come, you know, I'll be ready. Um, I just, you know, took, you know, this off season uh, for a time for me to, you know, uh, just continue to, you know, get better in all areas of my game. So mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, too much pressed on none of that. Yeah. So we're kind of in a moment in the NBA where it's like a transition. Like the new young guys are becoming the stars and then pretty soon the older guys are gonna kind of phase out. Is that what you feel right now as someone in the league that this is kind of like the new age? Yeah, I feel like, you know, it's we have a lot of talent, you know. Anytime you mention, you know, guys under 25, it's, you know, a lot of guys you can name. Exactly why I'm not about to name everybody right now because then they be like, oh, you forgot this person. But yeah, I feel like, you know, the, the league is in very good hands, you know, with, you know, the guys under 25, you know, who rising to be, you know, superstars in this league. What do you think is the difference between a star and a superstar? I feel like, you know, you have some guys, you know, who are, you know, capable of being, you know, some of the top players in this league. It's just certain little things like the superstars do, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, like if you mention like Kobe, Braun, like all those guys just have, you know, like a, a different edge, KD. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, they just do what superstars do, whether it's, you know, taking on whatever challenge, you know, bringing their team back, icing the game for their team, you know, certain stuff like that. Not saying, you know, it's like, you know, some stars, you know, who can't do it. It's just, it's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's difference. like this thing you can't really put your finger on, <laughs> yeah. but you just know it kind of yeah. when you, when like, you see right, it. He's a star, but this guy right here is a superstar. Like you just know the difference. So. Yeah. So when we were talking about how you would love to, you know, one day dunk on LeBron or like when people talk about, you know, dunking on Jordan, who do you think of this wave is going to be that guy where people talk about him as like almost the standard? I'm going to say me. I just have that confidence in myself. I knew you were going to say you. I should have yeah. said you can't say you. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> but I mean, I think that. That's the thing. So when someone asks someone a question like that and then they say themselves, everyone's like, oh my God, they say themselves. I can't believe they would do that. But why would you not say yourself? Yeah. Like, like that's I the got point. The, me personally, I never say nobody in this world can beat me one-on-one -on -one better mm -hmm. than me. Like it's just that confidence I have in myself. Mm -hmm. And no matter, you know, who I'm going up against, I'm always take myself. Like I, I don't fear nobody. So, I mean, everybody, you know, like I've been saying, put on their shoes and stuff the same way I do. So, yeah. There's no, no point in, you know, being scared of somebody out there uh, taking me and doubling down every time. Yeah, as you should, <laughs> as you should. Uh, one last thing I wanted to talk to you about, because we touched on it a bit um, with the article that I did with GQ when I had interviewed you for that. 42. Very cute. You had your bottle of 42. <laughs> Everybody, that's Josh's favorite drink. You ever want to get him anything in a bottle? 1942. 1942. You, you had your 21st birthday in the bubble. In the bubble, yeah. And, like, they threw a little party for you. 42 was on deck. Yeah, 42 <laughs> was, a, was a thing. And then you very recently turned 22. Happy late birthday. I remember the days. Thank you. Enjoy being, enjoy being 22. <laughs> um, but no, in the bubble, uh, one thing you were talking about was how really difficult it was for you at times. Like yeah. it was difficult for really most people. And you said that you went through a lot of mental issues there, but nobody really knew. Yeah. Can you kind of elaborate on what it looked like for you mentally? Uh, me, like, I'm a, I'm a big family person. So, you know, being away from my family, obviously, you know, was tough on me. Anytime everybody, you know, asks me, like, you know, what's your hobbies off the court? Like, that's my hobbies, you know, spending time with my family. We have found something to do, like, it don't matter what. Like, here, we all just started just playing Madden, just to, you know, just bond. Like, we just sit outside, play the game, and, you know, we just very competitive. But, you know, being in that bubble, you know, I wasn't able to do that. I had to talk to, you know, all my family, you know, through FaceTime, which was, you know, it's not a bad thing, but it was tough, you know, not actually seeing them. I had a daughter, couldn't even see her, trying to talk to her through FaceTime. And 
I don't know. I just felt like the the bubble just wasn't me. Like obviously, like I'm I'm a homebody. Like I like being home, but you know, just being stuck in there and not being able to do nothing was you know kind of tough. Like I was just overthinking a lot. Like I was you know getting down. Like, but I don't I don't tell nobody you know none of that stuff. Like I just anytime somebody asks me like. Like, are you okay? I'm, I always say, you know, I'm good, even if I'm not. Like, I'm just kind of used to, you know, getting through stuff on my own. So it was definitely tough for me. So yeah, not saying I was ready to leave the bubble, but I was. Yeah. Like, I mean, everyone was. <laughs> everyone was ready to go. But, I mean, is that difficult, like, to know that even if you're not okay, you're saying you are, and then it's like, okay, well, when you're not okay, what do you do? Who do you talk to? Like, what it, it feels it's like not, you don't. It's not. I feel like, you know, the word now, people say it's toxic. I feel like it is, like, because... It can go either way. Like, you know, you probably can get through it or you can go down even more. Mm -hmm. um, I always said, like, like one of my uh, favorite quotes was, you don't realize you're drowning when you're trying to be everyone else's anchor. So, mm -hmm. like, through the bubble, like, I was, you know, just thinking about that quote. Like, you know, sometimes you got to, you know, put yourself first, like your health, no matter what it is. Like, I'm always making sure everybody else straight, but sometimes I got to, you know, worry about me and... Normally, that's the times, you know, when I, you know, be in a dark place, when I'm mm -hmm. trying to make sure everybody else is good and knowing I'm not good and just be even more, you know, harder. So Yeah, that's one of the things I felt like they tried to do well in the bubble was, you know, how when you would wake up, you'd have to do the questionnaire. And, like, the very last question they say is, like, do you want to speak to a yeah. mental health professional today? Yeah. And I thought that was like a really nice thing that they did because it was hard for so many people. And when I've done interviews, I talked about it. I talked to Jimmy Butler about therapy. I just talked to Michael B. Jordan about therapy. And they've all said, like, I have tried this and it has helped me. And Michael B. said that he still does it. Is that yeah. something that you would try? I think, you know, eventually I would. Mm -hmm. um, normally, like, I'm just so used to either getting through it myself or just talking to my fam. Like, yeah. Or like my, you know, my close people. Like, I don't trust a lot of people, you know, with with certain stuff, so I feel like that's why I haven't yet. But, mm -hmm. I mean, right now, I feel like, you know, my life is good. Like, totally. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. Just got to stay right there, you know? Yes. No, that's but, what I say. You always have a smile on your face. Yeah, I'm yeah. always smiling. It's a lot behind the smile, but right now it's all smiles. <laughs> good. No, I'm glad. Because, like, I guess, you know, everybody always be like, she only want to talk about when Jaws doing well. I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> He's my favorite. Uh, but no, so I'm so happy you were able to come on and do this. But tell me, like, what what's the biggest jump you're going to make next season? What are we going to see from Ja? I'm trying to be an all-star, all-NBA team, and I'm trying to win a championship. Mm -hmm. That's my three Speak goals it. right there. Speak it. And yeah. then maybe mm -hmm. with some tweaks, win the dunk contest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I, we'll see. Yeah, I'm going to keep trying. Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. <laughs> but no, thank you for your time. You were fantastic as always. Hair has grown exponentially Man, since the first time I, I met you. I need to get it done. I look rough on camera right now. <laughs> I hope y'all can do, you know, put a little filter or something on me, man. <laughs> a, little, a little Photoshop. Yeah. You <laughs> got you, me. Jay. You got me right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No problem.